or take your first flight. Try to follow the instructions carefully and don't be discouraged by any difficulties. Let's get going. In order for the plane to take off, it needs to build enough speed. I'm increasing engine power to maximum. Now I can release the throttle lever. The plane will gather speed. Now that my speed is high enough, the plane will slowly lift off the ground. I can use the elevation rudder to make it take off faster. Now the plane is in the air. I'm waiting for it to build up enough speed so that it doesn't fall back to the runway. Then I'll retract the landing gear and flaps. Take off complete. My plane is now airborne. Before you attempt to take off, let's review your knowledge of aircraft controls. The first one is the elevation rudder. It's also called the elevator. As the name suggests, this control is used for ascending and descending. Try it yourself. When you push the elevator down, the plane goes up. When you push the elevator up, the plane goes down. I think that's clear enough. The second control directs the ailerons. Ailerons are used to roll the plane left and right. When you use this control, it makes the aileron on one wing go up, and the one on the other wing go down. Try it. The next control is the rudder. It is used for minor adjustments and when taxiing. Apply it carefully. See for yourself how it works. Now you are ready for takeoff. It's time to try your plane out in the air. The throttle lever regulates engine power. Position the throttle lever at full forward position. The plane will start gathering speed. Your speed and current engine power are shown as a percentage on the indicators. Watch the plane carefully while it's building speed. Remember to retract the landing gear and flaps after takeoff. If the landing gear and flaps remain extended, they will slow the plane down and decrease its maneuvering ability. Congratulations on your first takeoff. Trust me, when piloting planes, takeoff isn't exactly the easiest part. Make sure you keep an eye on your altitude especially when maneuvering the plane. You have a special altitude indicator to help you. Now for the ailerons. I've already told you that they are used to control your roll angle. You can even use them to pull off a barrel roll. barrel roll right now. Just roll the plane left or right. Excellent. Now for the rudder. You can use it to change the course of the plane slightly. In order to make a sharp turn, you shouldn't use the rudder. It's not meant for that. Now I will teach you how to control your airplane speed. Your airplane speed decreases when you gain altitude and increases when you lose altitude. The ability to effectively convert one into another is the key to your victory in combat. The throttle lever also helps you control your speed. You used it to build enough speed for takeoff. If you drop engine power, your speed will decrease. Try that now. Increase engine power to return to cruising speed. Sometimes, you need a quick, short-term increase in flight speed. This can be achieved by using the afterburner. Accelerate the plane. Be careful when using the afterburner. It overheats the engine and might cause it to give out. Turning the plane should be easy for you. To turn, use the ailerons and the elevator. First, you need to roll the plane left or right. Now, make the turn by pulling the control yoke. 
Now you've learned the ropes, let's move on to the final part of our flight. Follow the marked route. Congratulations. You have mastered the main principles of piloting. You still have a long way to go, but you've made the first step in exploring the air. You have all it takes to become a real ace. Welcome to the second part of your training. Today, you will engage in your first aerial combat. However, first things first. You can always change your viewpoint when flying. Usually there are three viewpoints. Cockpit, virtual cockpit, and third person view. Change the viewpoint. Press this button repeatedly to cycle between viewpoints. Choose the one you like best. You can zoom in to see your target better. Often, we'll need to see what is happening around you. For that, you can look around. However, your target might be out of your range of visibility. If that's the case, try to locate it on the map. Let's start your combat training now. Take a look at the radar. You can see your plane in the center, my plane, and four aerostatic balloons. These aerostatic balloons will play the role of enemy forces today. As with all enemies, they are marked red on the radar. Only enemy targets in your and your allies' range of visibility are shown on the radar. If you look back, you'll see several other aerostatic balloons. Now you can see them on your radar. target to make attacking more convenient. By pressing this button again, you will select the next target. This is convenient in several ways. First, the target you selected is now highlighted on your radar. Second, if you look away, 
There will be an arrow pointing to your target. A lead indicator will also be shown for a moving target. Third, now you can track your target. As soon as you take aim at your target, pull the trigger. Touchdown, I can use my brakes to reduce speed. I'm lowering my engine power to zero. And then I keep lowering the throttle lever to turn on the brake. Now my plane has stopped. It's your turn to make a landing approach. Follow the marked route. Your approach pattern is your pre-landing maneuvering close to the airport. 
It allows you to prepare the plane for landing and position it correctly. First, you need to descend, gradually slowing the plane. Apply the elevator down to level the plane. It should descend in a true horizontal position. Start braking. Lower the engine power to zero. Keep pulling the throttle lever to activate the brakes. Congratulations! You have mastered the hardest part of piloting airplanes. Our country can be proud of a pilot like you.